Well, let's speak now to Dr Ian Higginson, Vice President of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Lewis. Thank you so, for having me on the show. A pleasure. In your assessment, how bad are things right now? So um, the word difficult is probably describing it a little, a little bit mildly. I know um, we as a Royal College and our members and those um, uh, who work with us in the emergency services are really worried about what's happening in winter and we're worried about the scale of the crisis that we are now facing in our emergency care system, particularly in our emergency departments and ambulance services. So you talk about the scale of the problems. We've just heard some of the numbers there. Uh, but one of the other things here is the timing. We're not in the midst of winter yet and the harshest pressures traditionally. Are you expecting things to get significantly worse? I think there's two things to say to that question. The first thing is that all these numbers represent human beings and I think your story captured that very well. So when we talk about ambulances being held up outside emergency department, what that means is that we've got vulnerable, frail patients in our emergency departments, often for days now, waiting on hard trolleys where we struggle to care for their basic needs properly, where they can't get to sleep because it's always light and always noisy. We've got patients suffering a similar experience in ambulances. And then we have patients at home waiting for ambulances, as you've seen for your story. So these aren't just numbers, these are real people. And you've heard also how this affects the staff who are trying to look after those people to the best of their ability. Do we expect it to get worse? Well, yes, things tend to get worse over winter. And the, the question is, how, how bad does it get each winter? And does it get any better over the summer? What we tend to see now is a perpetual winter through the NHS, but a worse winter when it's actually winter. I know it's hard to, de hard to um, describe, but yeah. bad things get worse, essentially. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. Is that. We have had some numbers this morning about how these delays are actually impacting, for example, the number of people who are dying. Is it possible to get accurate numbers on that kind of number? No, it's not possible to get accurate numbers because um, there are so many confounding variables. But we know for sure that if patients wait more than uh, six hours in emergency departments to get into hospital, then a significant number of them will die in association with that. We know that it's harmful for patients to wait in ambulances because they can't get the treatments they need. And it, it's, it's blindingly obvious that if patients are seriously ill in the community and we can't get ambulances to them, then patients will come to harm. And when we're talking about harm, unfortunately, it does mean that patients are dying unnecessarily every day in our, uh, in our emergency care system because we can't get them the help they need quickly enough. And I then see. when we get them into our emergency departments, we can't treat them to the standard that we would like. OK, and I'm afraid to ask you this, but it's got to be very, very brief because we are out of time. Is there a, a single solution that you would like to see right at the top of the priority list? It's always going to come back to let's have a plan, let's focus on workforce and let's focus on the social care system. Dr Ian Higginson, thank you so much for coming on the programme and sparing the time. Thank you. Thank you.